understand where you're coming from. I mean, tr- listen, the reason I'm intrigued to see what's going on with Chelsea, because if it fails, <laughs> it doesn't matter to me. There's a Good. part of me, there's a part of me as a football fan, though, that's intrigued to see what they're building. My fear, just as a football person, is we're never going to see it complete because they're never going to have the patience to allow it to complete. But in that process, you might be kind of cutting off your nose to spite your face. And sometimes in life, you have to have patience for things to flourish fully, you know, for things to taste the best as they should. You know, it's like a fine and wine. FFP would come hard on them as well. to mature. You can't rush it. And FFP would come hard on them 100%. Because this whole, listen, this amortization buzzword that all these Chets fans have learned over the last 12 months won't save you three years from now if you still suck. So all this... Like, please stop just convincing yourself that it's all going to be okay. It ain't all going to be okay. So if, if you fail... By the way, there's a report that come out, and I believe it's the athletic, correct me if I'm wrong, Terry, that if even you get 50% of transfers correct, 50%, you're considered successful. If you get 50% correct. So now, out of all these players on death row contracts, if half of them fail, what are you going to do then? Genuinely, what are you going to do? Who's going to buy out a four-year Mudrik contract? Who's going to buy out a four-year Lavia contract or a Caicedo contract? I, or do, any of I do think Chelsea have, again, what I've read about this, I think Chelsea have got foul safes in there. So the contracts are fairly long, but they're very much bonus-related like you guys do. So the base rate of some of these players might be 50, 60,000. If they're winning, if they're in the Champions League, when they're winning game scoring, winning trophies, then it escalates more to the 100s and the 150s and the 200s. So although they're long-term contracts, the base level... They've, I think they've shredded off their wage bill somewhere close to like 60 to 70 million. In fact, their wage bill per year, after everything they've done, is less now than Liverpool's, less now than Man United's, less now than City's, maybe even lower than Arsenal's the last time I checked. So yeah, but we don't have the, death row contracts. That's the yeah, thing. I understand that. But the, in terms of the exposure of all these players, it's little. Now, the contract length is this. So if you've got a player who's on 50,000 a week. You might have six years left on his contract, but that's yeah. easier. To, that's easier to sell than Jaden Sancho at three hundred and fifty grand a week with two years left on his contract because clubs just won't pay right now Sancho three hundred and fifty grand a week because he's not he's not lived up to that kind of money. But yet someone like Mihailo Mudrik, you might have a team in Italy that goes, I know he has it work for us. They could afford to give him fifty odd thousand. In fact, he might even be willing to take slightly less because. 40 to 50,000, there isn't a huge differential. He ain't getting the bonuses at Chelsea anyway if he's not playing and he's flopping. So I don't personally think the length of these contracts is going to overly damage Chelsea because they're very, the, the, the base salaries are quite low. That Again, those are the little elements here that are clever, which is why, although this looks like a very I'm not saying it's approach, not stupid, Terry, but you, you just mentioned Mudrik. That five-year contract, even on an 80 grand a week or whatever it is, that's 20 million. So you're basically saying, so let's assume AC Milan want to buy Mudrik two years from now. So mm-hmm. are they going to pay 20 million worth of wages to Mudrik and go pay Chelsea 50 million pounds for his but that, but that may not be, But that also may not be necessary. So let's say, he's got, so let's say he has got five years left and that's worth 20 million. The player's not kicking the ball for Chelsea because he just hasn't lived up to expectations. I think yeah. a team might come in and t- look, five years is, a, is about the normal length of a contract. So... I think they would come in and go, yeah, look, we'll pay you 50 grand a week still because that's the only reason he took as low as 50 grand a week at Chelsea is because he believed in his ability at the time and that he would start regularly and win things and therefore it would escalate like it does at Liverpool to to 150, 200. But if he's not earning that because it hasn't worked out, he isn't losing anything because he never, he's never going to get that. So I think it's, I think it's not easy, but I don't think it's impossible for some of these players to be sold equally, I think we have to also be measured here. I think a good 30 to 40% of these young players have purchased. They may develop into being good enough to play for Chelsea, but I think a lot of them have been purchased to... to, Do you have this expression in Jordan, like flipping houses? Does that happen out there? Is that a legal thing to do? Like here, what you can do in England, I haven't done this. It's one of my next business ventures. You find a house that maybe needs renovating. It's not in great, great condition. The house might be on sale for 200 grand. But you look at it and you speak to my brother's a builder. So you look at it and go, right, we buy it for 200 grand, 50,000 pound renovations. So that's 250 that's cost us. But you then might be able to sell it for 350,000. So you make 100 grand profit. But you do this all in like three to six months. It's called flipping houses, right? So I think that's what Chelsea are doing with some of these players. That he's 15 million. He's 20 million. I think we bring him in and develop him, send him out on loan. We might be able to get 25, 30 million with the way the market's going in a year's time. And it's going to create a new 
um, income stream for the club. This is how um, Burnley are increasing their, um, looking to increase their revenue. I was listening to Vincent Company talk about it on the doc. There's a documentary out, and he says the way that a, a team like Burnley, in or out of the in or out of the Premier League, the only way we can really quickly grow our revenues is going to be through buying young, talented players and selling them after two or three years for profits, which is why you will always see the likes of Brighton do this because the vast majority of Brighton's income is TV money from the Premier League and player sales. But if they didn't do those player sales, they would never have enough money to be able to stay in the Premier League, even with the TV money. Does that make sense? Because everybody's wages goes up. So I think we have to look at this multiple layers with Chelsea. We really do. There's so much more going on here than we're used to seeing. The problem we have as fans is that the big media companies spend no time getting on financial experts to educate. The fa- That's why football fans still think net spend is real, because the media tell us it is. But it isn't. It's not how football clubs work. Your net spend is based on your actual profitability as a football club because a large amount of income for football clubs is player sales so it's part of your business process to sell people other clubs that have that have huge revenues from other areas don't need to sell equally what that does it changes the asking price of these said players how do we know this because the financial consultancies who set the parameters for player worth have described it to us the booklets are out there the pamphlets are out there they're available online this is what makes a player more expensive or less cheap, which is why a Premier League club, top six club especially, buying a talented 22-year-old player from Serie A will pay more than a team from Germany would for that same player. Because the money... Okay, I understand what you're saying, Terry. But at the same time, in the present tense, here's what we know for a fact. Present tense, Chelsea have had an easy start to the season and they have... Essentially, three points at the nine. We know for a fact Chelsea fans are not patient. This is something you have encountered in your real life and while working on YouTube. You know that they're not a patient bunch, and you know that you can't tell a Chelsea fan that you're going to win three, four years from now when he's lived with Roman Abramovich for the last twenty years. What we also know is there is a possibility of any transfer, even the transfers your club made, my club made. There is a possibility transfers fail. That's the reality of the matter. Is it easier to sell them while on their smaller contracts? Yes, it is. So I'm not insulting Chelsea. I'm not saying anything wild. I'm just saying if there comes a point in time in which you've got to sell Mudrik on a five-year contract or Caicedo on a five-year contract or etc., it's going to be a lot more difficult, a lot more difficult than if he was on a two-year or a three-year contract or a one-year contract. That's the, the situation I'm talking about. And with Chelsea Football Club, no one's applying pressure on them. No one's applying pressure on them. No one's asking them to win. No one's saying shit to them because they've apparently built a young team. But as people were saying in the comments earlier on that are non-rattled Chelsea fans, as people were saying earlier on, neither myself nor Terry nor anyone in the chat told them go buy a bunch of youngsters. They could have bought 26-year-olds, 27-year-olds, 28-year-olds. We've already given the example of James Madison. I'm not even giving you an example of a player who's worth 100 million. I'm saying James Madison. Look how much Spurs bought him for. Mm. So you could have had yeah. Madison, you could have had all these players. Yeah. And they would have been players with experience, which would put you better off in the short term. I, Since I, when I, do Chelsea fans yeah. wait three years to win, Terry? So, Are we so going to be real? So, so, so no, I, and I do understand that. That element, I'm completely in agreement with you on. But I just looked at the maths here. Mohalo Mudrik's contract is worth £44 million pounds for the whole length. Jaden Sancho had remaining on his contract more value than this. So although it's a shorter contract, his contract's worth more money. It is probably easier right now, if we're looking at purely monetary sense, to sell Mohalo Mudrik than it is Jaden Sancho. You know, so it, again, I do get where you're coming from, but this is about Chelsea fans being patient. And listen, I hope that the Man United fan in me hopes they're not. Hopes they're not. But if they are patient and they allow their club to build what I call a long-term sustainable sort of footballing philosophy, a style of football, a profile of player, like Bayern Munich have, like Ajax have, like Dortmund have, but with the money they're able to spend, they could build something that's as good as what Manchester City have right now. They could do that. No, they can't. No, they can't. Oh, they can. They, they absolutely. No, anything, no, 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 they can't. They, they, Chelsea they, will never they be the best club. Chelsea will never be the best club in the Premier League. They will never be the best club in the Premier League. Why? Why? They'll never. Okay, okay. They'll never okay. be the best club in the Premier League. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. But Pep and Klopp are no. not going to be here forever. They're not going to be here forever. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. They're not going to be here they're, forever. They're, they're not going to be here forever. And there's nothing that every single one of our clubs that's owned by billionaires, 
has the ability to be run as well as Man City. They all have the ability to have long-standing no, business models. No, yes, they, they, they do. Absolutely. Why? why your can't club, I... maybe. Your hang club, on, maybe. Hang on, hang on. Let me ask you this question: What stops? Yes. A, what stops a club from being run as well as Man City? That we didn't use any loophole and we are not corrupt and we didn't have mailboxes printing money. Before, before you ask me, before I answer that question on real, you can I ask you a question: What's easier to sell, one Sancho or five Mudricks? It's a really good question, but you're not selling them as a. But you're not selling them. It's a. It's a fallacy of a question. It's, it's a. It's a. It's a logical fallacy because you're not selling those five players at once. You're selling them individually. So it's the same answer. It's, it's about the same. Yeah. yeah no. But my, my point is, if, it's if not just proper, Mudrik. Yeah. It's not just Mudrik. If you have three, four Chelsea players who need to be sold three years from now, then what? Uh, uh, listen, and that that could be a problem for them. That could be a problem where they lose money, and I think it's a risk that they're taking. But at the same time, the financial exposure is no different to your club signing five players and them signing 10. But if your players are being paid two to three times more salary, the financial exposure is the same. But on your question, on the question I asked you about why clubs can't be run well, I hear your point yeah. that you believe City have cheated to get the income they have now. 100%. 100%. Okay. But that income is in and around what the Liverpools and the Man Uniteds and the Arsenals make, it, in your words, organically. So if we all, we've all got the same income now. They've cheated to get their income. Cool. But what stops your club and my club? And by the way, Man United spend more than City on players. There's n the only thing that stops us from being run as well as them is our owners and the people they employ to run the football club. And I think in the world of football, there's enough quality people out there to be run as well as Man City are. I think what they're doing is brilliant, but I don't think that oh, they've got the best people and no one else could ever have anybody as good. Barring Pep, I don't think any club could have a manager as good as Pep. I think he is the best manager available. You've got Klopp. I think everybody else is a, is a level or two below him, but he won't stay there forever. But City aren't going to fall off and suddenly become a bad club for the next 20 years. They may not be as dominant, but they're still going to be there or thereabouts because their club as a lot as a as a model, which is for success before, during, and after Pep reign like Bayern Munich, like D D Dortmund do. Man United used to have this, but it was all based on what Fergie wanted, and we didn't continue it after he left. It, it's Man United is still stuck in a way, and we're trying to change it now. But I don't think it'll be successful until the owners go. Where we did this with all the managers after Fergie, it was about that manager's philosophy we're going to buy into, rather than having a, a, a consistency around club philosophy. Brighton are a prime example. I listened to their owner talk not long ago, and he basically said that all of our teams... So from the under five girls and boys teams, right through to the first team of men and women, the style of football and the profile of player we look for is identical across that match. I would look at, I would look at say Chelsea as an example, their academy under Roman was amazing. It could play great football, but the amount of times their academy football did not match the style of football of their manager in the first team was ridiculous. And that worked in that era, but football has evolved and changed and more clubs now have a, a Bayern Munich esque, uh, approach they may not be as big or as successful because of finances and it's important to follow that suit city you're doing it perfectly that's why chelsea fans have to get on board with their club building a long-term plan man united have needed it i've been calling for this for 10 years we can't you, you you never have a fergie again you can't build a club in the image of a manager because no one's going to stay for 25 30 years and when they leave Every time a manager leaves, it means you need to do a rebuild. You should never need to do a rebuild that takes more than a summer of five or six players in, five or six players out. That's as much of a rebuild as you should ever need at our clubs. But we don't because we 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 still bought into this antiquated idea of building around a manager's philosophy. Now your manager should match your club's philosophy. Then it works perfectly and there'll be some subtle changes and differences and you'll pick things up and evolve along the way but as a general rule there should be a an 85 90 percent match on the way your club wants to play it so there's no point your manager playing a different style of football to how you teach your kids coming through the academy to play that's stupid that makes no sense and that's what chelsea have got to get right because city do it perfectly brighton do it amazingly well you know there's loads of teams that you know how that chelsea right. can become like man city get the best manager in the world give him an open checkbook and cheat the system. Simple as. It's like, no, no, one second. Because let me, because now I'm going to, no. let me, no, no, let me, let me be real, okay? Because it's like a mafia boss building his entire foundation based on cheating. And then because he owns five successful restaurants, I'm supposed to clap for him. Yeah, but where did he get the original money from? From being a mafia boss. It's the same with Manchester City. They made mailboxes print money.
I'm supposed to clap for them. I ain't gonna clap for them. Fuck Man City. And I hope Man City get liquidated. And I hope the 115 charges come through and they get charged by FFP because it's absolute bullshit how they, what's what they've been doing. That's the reality of the matter. If Chelsea want to become like Man City, go get the best manager in the world. Give him an open checkbook. That's literally the only way for it to work but, out. But that isn't because what City they can't... But Sam, I need to interject because that isn't what City have done per se. So you, you could be right. They've inflated the income that they've got. But just spending money doesn't guarantee you success. If they had the money to spend them pep there, but they didn't have the internal infrastructure and support system that, that, that they have, he would still win trophies because of how good he is in the money, in my opinion. But they wouldn't have been as consistently successful. Yeah, that's why I said get the best manager in the world. Get the no, best manager in the world. Without give him an open checkbook, he'd be successful. Without the, but without the infrastructure behind him, it still wouldn't work as consistently. And do you know how I know that's true? Do you know how I know that's true? Your club, when it was being run brilliantly with Michael Edwards and Klopp, spending what you were spending... You caught City and surpassed them. He left. Your internal goings-on changed. The management of the club changed in terms of how you managed it. And you've fallen away since. And you've actually spent more money since then than you did prior. If you were still at Michael Edwards and his team running the club with Klopp as your head coach, I believe with what you've spent in the last two to three years, you would not have fallen off like you did last year. I believe you'd have picked up at least one more Premier League and other trophies along the way. So when you guys are being run well, it was great. As soon as you stopped being run as well, you fell off. It's about the running. It's the management of your football club. Is so I agree. Important. It's so I important. know City, City run their club well. I've got no doubts about that. I'm just simply talking about the foundation. The foundation has and, been... And what I, said, I, didn't say, I didn't say Chelsea will win as much as City. I said they could be run as well. Now, you, you could have 10 teams that are run impeccably well. And which clearly good. they aren't, to be fair. Clearly no, they aren't. Yeah, that Chelsea are not right now. But the point I'm making is they could get to that stage. As long as they employ the right people, learn from their mistakes, they can get to that position. It doesn't mean you're going to win like they did because you don't know what the landscape's going to be like. I mean, there may not even be a manager in the world in five years' time. Say, say Pet retires. There may not be a manager in the world as, as good as him or a Fergie or, or a Paisley that can dominate like that domestically. So you, you may not, you, you literally may not be able to do it. It may be impossible to do it because you don't have a manager at that level, but that doesn't mean your club can't be run as well. This is the point I'm making. Your club can be run impeccably well. That should be, that should be the base level that we are all demanding from our, football, from, from our owners is that we're run well. We have the, our only real focus isn't making money, sponsorship deals. All of that is a, is a process and a, and, and, and a, and procedures to create the best football team imaginable and available. And the problem is for a lot of our clubs, we don't have that model and it could take two to three years to build it internally. And there's going to be a lot of broken eggs on the way to making that omelet. The problem we have nowadays is nobody. People just do not have patience. People go okay, to there the are gym. broken eggs on the way to make the omelet, but the people at the restaurant are impatient. That's why it's a recipe for disaster. Your fans are willing to be more patient. The Arsenal fans are patient. The Liverpool fans are patient. Chelsea fans ain't patient. Why are we living in an ulterior universe? They won't wait. <laughs> they want instant success. This is the, the last 20 years. This is what they've been used to. Spend a lot of money, get a manager, win a league title or two, sack manager, repeat. That's literally what they've been used to over this last 20 years. And now you're, you're, I'm supposed to believe that Chelsea fans are going to be patient. There's already, I mean, why do we have to theorize? There's already Chelsea fans who are pot out. Why, why are we lying to yourselves? There's already Chelsea fans who are match going Chelsea fans who so, go to Stamford Bridge right. who don't want to so, just, just to interrupt you again, I'm really sorry. I don't, I'm not saying that you have to believe they're going to be patient because I don't believe they will be. So again, I think we're in, agree we're, we're, we're in agreement on that. But what I'm talking about is why they should be because of what they're trying to do and build, it takes time. And I agree with you. They should be patient. I agree. Completely agree. I I've, I've have no problem with you saying that. I'm but if we to, agree I'm, on them not being patient by definition, then how, how am I supposed to believe it if the Chelsea fans I'm surrounded by, a lot of them already potch out? Like, what am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to, like, uh, think about some new magical rainbow mystery world in which they're all patient? That's not the real life. No. In real life, the Chelsea fans, I know whether it be real life, whether it be online, whether it be as content creators, they're not patient by definition. So I don't expect them to suddenly become patient because they've never been patient to begin with. No. And the patience is running thing no, because I, the last I, title was five years. I,